When it comes to animating a camera moving through your scene, you do have a few choices. Um, not so much in the type of camera, yeah, there's nothing too exciting in amongst these, but more in the way which you control it. Your two main choices are going to be to either animate the camera directly, or once you have one, you could make use of the align to spline tag. First, let me give you the quick pros and cons of these two methods. Um, when you're just animating the camera directly by itself, just using position, scale, and rotation keyframes, this does tend to be the most straightforward. You can do it either by controlling the camera externally, i.e. you see it as an object and you move it around, or you can control it whilst you're looking through the camera. So let's just quickly throw an object in here so we have something to look at. Here's a nice little landscape. Okay, so option one, you can just move it around as an object. If I click on the camera's little enable checkbox to turn this on, then I can come out to one of my other views, my top view, my side view, and so on, and do the controlling from here. So I could grab the camera and start shuffling it around sort of externally as, as if I'm watching the camera from a distance. Or if you prefer, you can do it whilst you're looking through the camera. There's nothing to stop you using your, your one, two, and three shortcuts to pan around, to zoom in, to, to rotate the camera's view. Now, when you're doing these, I would broadly suggest making use of the manual keyframe option. Although I would tend to use the automatic keyframing for, for most of my animation, the problem with uh, a camera animation is that you often don't keyframe everything you want to keyframe. Let me try to explain. If I have a camera, let's just take a simple camera, let's make it point straight upwards, and we'll level it off. We don't actually care what the camera sees right at the moment. If I have my camera here and I go for the automatic keyframing, we'll turn it on. I might decide that I want the camera to move forwards and then turn right and move over to the side. Now this might seem like a fairly straightforward thing to do, but if I start my camera off down here and then halfway through the animation, so just drag your little green time slider, I tell the camera, right, you should move forwards. And then at the end of the animation, I want it to move over here and turn right. The problem I'll have with this is that it won't do what I've just asked it to do. It won't move forwards and then turn and move. Instead, it will begin rotating right from the very start. As soon as I press play, the rotation has already begun. Even though I didn't rotate it, until I actually place the camera all the way over here. But the, ro the rotation will begin right from the beginning. This is because if we have a quick look at the keyframes, have a look in your timeline window. This is because cinema will always begin an animation from the start. And although we, we set three positions for it, we have a start position, a mid position, and an end position, we never defined a mid rotation. So cinema will just begin rotating right from the very beginning. If I unfold my camera here, you'll see I have my three keyframes for position. One, two, and three. But for the rotation, I only have two of them. One at the start, one at the end. This is because I made no change to the rotation in the middle of the animation. This is why, broadly speaking, for a camera, I would tend to use some manual keyframing. So if I just undo these, get it back, remove the animation. Let's go for the manual method this time. Let's do the same, exact same uh, routine. At the start, get it in position, hit record. Halfway through the animation, it moves forwards, hit record. And then at the end of the animation, it moves over here and once more, it turns right, hit record. This time it'll be quite different. It will move forward and it won't rotate at all. It's still facing forward as we told it to. This is because we use the manual record button and halfway through the animation, we have this keyframe here, which if, again, if you look at your timeline, you'll find there is now a keyframe in the middle for the rotation. So the manual manual recording, it's, uh, it's more suitable for cameras. All I would say is 
we have this scale track here. Obviously, we're not going to scale the camera. There's no, there's no reason to change the size of the camera. So just have a little look down at this toolbar here. These are your recording filters. These tell Cinema what the manual recording should be recording. So all we would need to do is turn off this middle scale button down here. So Cinema doesn't attempt to keyframe the scale of the camera. There's no harm in doing it, but you're just adding lots of unnecessary keyframes to your timeline. You're just making your files bigger and making editing them a little bit more difficult. Okay, but now let's have a quick look at the Alighta Spline. This is a, a popular choice uh, for, for, for fairly good reasons, but it does have a couple of downsides I'd just like you to be aware of. Again, if I had a camera, so I've just started a new scene here, and this time rather than keyframing using the add keyframe button, the, the record button, I'm going to draw a spline path. I'm going to take a simple bezier and say, right, I would like my camera to move over here, up there, across, and then finally to the side. So a similar sort of path, but this time I'm drawing it with a spline object. If I tell my camera, you should have a tag which says align to spline. Down here it'll ask me, okay, which spline path should we follow? Well, we can drag and drop our spline down into that box, and it'll now follow it. Uh, if you want it to face forward and point in the correct direction, just turn on the tangential button. It basically means follow the direction you're moving. Now, once this is set up, we generally only tend to need two keyframes. One at the start, where the position is set to zero. So just hold down the command key or the control key and click on, let's just zoom in here, click on this little circle to the side. This will keyframe just this one specific setting. So hold down control or command and click, and it adds a keyframe. We can then go to the end of the animation, do, 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 do and say, okay, at the end of the animation, at the end of the project, it should have reached the end of the spline. The position should be 100%. And again, just command or control click on that little circle, and it adds a keyframe. So that, that does make this part um, fairly straightforward, but I have to point out there are some downsides. First of all, controlling the speed is potentially going to be a bit of an issue. You'll see it moves reasonably quickly across the straight part, slows down for the corner, and then speeds up again along the straight. This is a, this is a fairly typical problem. Uh, it's not the hardest one to fix. You just need to go to your spline object and change the intermediate points from adaptive to uniform. By doing this, Cinema will no longer care about how far apart these, these points are. Um, to, to try and explain this, let's just put this back to the adaptive mode. Keep in mind, the other thing you can use splines for is modeling. And odd, as odd as it sounds, actually making a model from this really does explain it reasonably well. If I extrude the spline that I used for my animation, and I extrude it upwards, and I'll show you the wireframe mesh. Have a look. Cinema will put as few divisions along the straight parts as possible. So there's none there and there's none there, but there's loads and loads in the corners. This is because when it goes around a corner, you need more mesh to make it look nice. Um, uh, but oddly, it actually also uses a similar sort of spacing for, for the keyframes, for, for the motion of an object. It will try to take the same amount of time to go from one segment to the next. So if there's lots and lots of segments all in a little small tight space, it effectively slows down in these areas. By changing the intermediate points on the spline from adaptive, this is why we have few here and lots here, and we change them to uniform, it's a much more even spacing. The, the, the segments are very, very evenly spaced. And this even spacing also allows for a fairly even motion when it's used for animation. So essentially, in a nutshell, set your spline to uniform intermediate points and it makes your animation speed control 
much easier, much, much easier, because it will maintain a fairly consistent speed. It'll accelerate and then decelerate towards the end, but that's generally the sort of thing you're after. Um, but but I did mention, I was going to point out some of the downsides. This isn't a massive downside, it's not the hardest thing to fix. Um, but it does have one slight issue, possibly, depending on how far you go with your project. Let's take a simple example. Let's say that there's some sort of door which needs to open up, the camera goes through the doorway, and then the door closes again. We can kind of emulate this by just grabbing ourselves a cube object. So here's a cube, let's make the display a bit easier to see. Here's a cube, we'll pretend that this is our door. Just flatten it off a little bit. Okay, and we're just going to make it a sliding door for, for simplicity's sake. If I have my project here, and I've got the door in the way of the camera's path, so this, is, this door is going to get in the way, and I'll use the manual keyframing for this. So the camera comes along, it approaches the door, and at this point I would like the door to start opening, so I'm going to hit record. A few moments later the camera gets to the door, so by this point it should be fully out the way. Hit record. And then once the camera's gone through, it closes once more. So as a very simple little example, the camera comes along, the door gets out the way, and then closes. So at no point does this camera hit the door. The door is completely out of the way. Now obviously this is a, a little bit quick, you wouldn't really do it this fast, but it gets the idea across. The problem with a spline-based animation is that later on in the project when the client says, oh, um, can we extend the project by 10 seconds? Or can we add uh, a little bit of extra movement to the end of the animation? The problem is the timing of the camera is tied in with the spline's shape. So if I go back to my spline and I add a little bit of extra path, a little bit of a, basically a little bit more of a, a route to the end, so it now comes down here and goes around here. Remember, the align to spline animation goes from 0 to 100%. And whereas 100% on the spline used to be here, it's now over here. So the camera will have to move faster to get all the way across this route. And if you've carefully timed doors opening, TV sets turning on, or any other events, the timing is now wrong. Because as that camera comes along, it's now going to hit the door, then the door opens. This, this is just fundamentally the problem of spline-based animations. If anything ever changes further down the line, it means you need to retime all of the events you've done along the way. So what's the solution? What, what is the correct answer? Well, I would actually go back to the simple animation. The, the reason a lot of people don't like to use the position-based animation, just the standard keyframes, is because they don't get those nice bezier handles. They can't select the path and adjust the exact motion of these two bezier handles to say exactly where it goes. Well, actually you can. You just got to turn them on. If you have recorded a simple keyframe based animation, just select any of those keyframes. By the way, you can actually click and drag on these to move them around as well. But just select any one of these and then have a look in your attributes. You will see the settings for that particular keyframe. What's causing these problems are two settings. The reason we can't change our tangents is because Cinema is controlling them. First, turn off the automatic tangents. Cine the reason we see no tangents is because Cinema has control over them. If we turn these off, then Cinema long no longer has control over them. Uh, but there is another setting which is turned on by default called Clamp. This one also suppresses those tangents. So turn this one off as well, and all of a sudden, Boom! You now have tangents you can use to control your animation. You just move them around and adjust them just like normal. There's, there's really no difference with these. You stretch them, change the path, change the route, but you can do this for whichever keyframes you like. So if I don't like the way this animation starts, I can just click on the start keyframe, turn off these two options, one, two, and I now have my manual tangents. Um, 
This also is a quite a nice way of accelerating and decelerating, by the way. You may have noticed that the, the, the animation normally slowly accelerates, builds up a bit of speed, and then it comes down to a halt at the last keyframe. Well, now I can squash and stretch these to choose how it accelerates. I can stretch them out so it starts off very fast, or I can squash these down very, very, very small, and it will slowly accelerate into this motion instead. This, for me, this is my preferred way of doing camera animations. It gives you more control, and you don't have any problem if the timing changes. Because all of these keyframes are set positions and they have set points in time, if my door opens at frame 49, these keyframes are staying on frame 49. There's no problem with uh, slippage. There's no problem with the animation timing sh shifting. 